we're celebrating healthcare careers here in Macon County, and today with us we have PJ Maloney. Welcome. Thank you. Great. Okay, so PJ, you're a registered nurse. Yes. All right. Now tell us where you work and what your typical day looks like. So I work on 5100 at DMH. We have um, oncology, neurology, and surgical patients on that unit. So kind of a mosh posh, kind of get to learn a lot about a lot. So that's pretty cool. And then um, day to day, honestly, a 12 hour shift. I mean, there, a lot goes on in 12 hours. Um, typically morning time is, I personally like to let my patients sleep. Um, so I don't bother them, but um, we have a uh, report in the morning with the night shift nurses. I work day shift. So we have report. Usually that is um, a full holistic picture of um, through the ER. Uh, if they went to ICU, we get a picture of that and then we kind of get a how we got to where we're at now. So we get that for all of our patients and then um, we have morning med passing, uh, morning assessments as well, kind of see where our patients are at, how they're feeling during the day. Um, and then we kind of move through our day. We have afternoon meds, we have um, uh, rounds with our director, we have like dietitians and physical occupational therapy and uh, palliative care representatives and we kind of all meet at 10 a.m. every day during the week and we talk about how our patients are doing, what discharge looks like and how they're moving through their plan of care. And then um, after that, it's honestly that's a big portion of our day is the morning, afternoon, things kind of slow down a little bit. Uh, we get to actually, personally, I like to talk to my patients during the afternoon, really get to see who they are and, you know, talk to their families, talk to them and treat them more as people than patients. So um, we kind of just get to hang out in the afternoon and then uh, we have different schedule of meds that happen in the afternoon and then we end our day with reports and then we started it. So I then tell the night shift nurse how where they how they got to us and if it's the same night shift nurse, just an update, how they do their day today. Very nice. So not only, it sounds like not only is the kind of the science and the medical side important, but communication oh, is yes. really key. Oh yes, not only communication with the patients and you know, breaking down that barrier between doctor and patient and trying to be that liaison is a really big goal of mine because obviously doctors have a lot of people that they see and they like to keep things short and professional, which I understand, but then I come in and I get to actually, you know, talk in layman's terms and get to, you know, really create that communication. So communicating with, communicating with patients is very important, but also being able to communicate with doctors during the day. And I personally like when the doctors find me I mean, I'm busy most of the time, but they like to find me and then we can go do rounds to, with all of the patients that I have with them, which is very valuable because then I get to see how they interact with each other, but also what the doctors are telling the patients. Sometimes, unfortunately, based on time frame, I'm not able to be present for that communication. So I don't necessarily know what the doctors are telling the patients. So yes, communication is very key within our care. So what kind of training did you have to become a registered nurse? Uh, for my RN, I went through nine weeks of training with my preceptor Shelby on 5100. She let me structure the way I wanted to be trained, which I valued highly. Um, so I started off with my one patient and then I had to do all of their meds and Shelby was in the room with me when I did everything. And I started off with just managing my one patient and then we advanced to two and then to four. And then typically our average day is I will have between five to, to sometimes seven patients depending on how we're staffed for that day. So um, I personally think that starting off small was really beneficial for me because taking on sometimes five patients at once in your first couple weeks is terrifying. Truly. So, um, yeah, so I got to structure my training and then I went through nine weeks of it. And then my director kept me on the same schedule as my preceptor for a few months afterwards. So any questions I had, any confusion that I had, I was able to go directly to my preceptor and kind of work through with her. Nice. So once you graduated from Millican University, it wasn't just thrown right in. There's still some training that happens, pretty intense training then to really um, kind of ease you in. To the environment there yes. at the hospital. Yes, and then me personally, I worked as a CNA at the beginning of my junior year through when I started as an RN in August of 2021. So um, when I graduated, I still had to pass my boards, which were in July for me. So I graduated in May and I worked as a CNA while studying for my boards through the whole summer. And then once my boards posted and um, I got my license posted, that's when I started in August. So not only did I have a formal nine week training with my preceptor, but I personally worked as a CNA for two years. So kind of get that, that bedside rapport and that ability to communicate really grew um, through being a CNA. You know, I think that's a great thing about healthcare too, is it's very stackable, right? Yes. So there's all sorts of different um, opportunities. And as you started, you know, college, college degree, college educated, also CNA, and then RN, and just keep going from there. 
Yes, and yeah. so being able to then be a, a college student and a CNA, and now an RN, I get to tie in three different areas of learning for me personally, and so I was able to really tie those together, and that created a very good, holistic, you know, just learning environment for me. Absolutely. So think back to when you were a kid. Mm -hmm. Were there things that you liked to do as a kid that you see now that you're doing in your profession? Definitely, definitely. I was the, the weird little kid that my dad would always, I would play with his veins. He had, and now looking back on it, great veins. So um, I got, I was always poking them and I was always playing with them. And at first he'd always question like, what are you doing, dude? Like, and then uh, as I grew up, I would still do it. And it got to a point where he just put his hand out and I just poke it all the time. Oh. And then in high school, actually, um, I went to an all boys Catholic school in uh, Chicago called Mount Carmel High School. Um, and they had a very unique opportunity of uh, a sports medicine team. So in high school, I was involved with most of the football team, but I was on field for practices and games. Um, and I would do taping, rehab, um, ice, you know, all types of therapy uh, with my fellow students. And so it was really cool. That was my introduction to medicine outside of both my parents working in a hospital in Chicago. Um, growing up, I got to be in the halls of that, just be in that environment. In high school, I got to do, really get my hands dirty and know that that was the initial, like, I want to do medicine in some fashion. Awesome. So what advice would you give to, let's say, a junior high or high school student that they really don't know what they want to do, right? I mean, that's a pretty young age to ask, you know, have, have it all figured out. So what advice would you give to them as it pertains to pursuing a career in medicine? A career in medicine? I would, uh, first and foremost, take some time to really figure out what you want to do. Um, medicine isn't for everyone, but if you have a passion for it, get your hands dirty as early as you can. I personally, I had classmates who didn't work in the hospital or didn't pursue um, a CNA career uh, before they became a nurse, and there really is that knowledge gap and that uh, skill divide. So I would say, first and foremost, know what you want to do, which at a young age, it's hard to know what you want to do, but if you feel that passion and you feel that kind of kick in your gut, try it out. The, the only way you know how to know if you like it is to try it. So talk to someone, try and figure that out, uh, a connection, and try it out, honestly. It's something that you can do. Awesome. All right, lastly, what's your favorite part of your job? My favorite part of my job would be the, this is my unique way of bringing love into the world. This is my unique way of opening my heart and being able to uh, bring love into people that necessarily I don't know. And being from Chicago, these are all strangers that I meet, you know, there's not a family person that I know or there's no uh, personal connection to these people outside of, you know, neighborly connection. So being able to bring love into the world with two people that I wouldn't have met if I weren't going, or if I hadn't gone to Milliken and weren't living in Decatur. So this is my personal way of loving everyone and having a good time doing it. I love it. Thank you so much. Of course, of course.